Thank you so much for sticking to Y254 TV. You are watching the Power Talk Show and I am your host, Cheryl Blessing. Now, before we went on our break, we were talking about sexual and reproductive health and rights. And Brid Bridget Mudoni was just taking us through some of the contraceptives and some of the information that we need to know if we are sexually active and we have sexual pa partners. So you were just telling Bridget that we need to learn more we need to seek information especially through tests before we take contraceptives before we decide on a method of contraceptives so where can we find this because most people are not aware that there are doctors who are specifically there for that where can the common mananchi if i'm just like a, a lady from a low income background and i want to seek information and help about my reproductive health where can i find this information and the the doctors for that uh, thank you for that question and uh, you can find it as uh, in all public health facilities uh, from level one to level three they are free of charge the government has done a really good job in making sure that contraceptives are free yes uh, in the nairobi financial bill i'm talking this of nairobi only uh, there was a way that uh, uh, contraceptives was to be charged but later our governor amended and now it's free and then for level four and for level five hospitals they are charging just a little bit and this was to make sure that every woman has access to contraceptives because you find that there are some people there are some young girls especially in informal settlements, you find that they have been assaulted. Then what happens? They need these contraceptives to prevent themselves from becoming pregnant because they're still young, they want to continue the education, and that's why now contraceptives are free in dispensaries, level one to level three hospitals. Yeah. Yes, so make sure you visit any public facility. And then for young people, also the government has, is really trying to make sure that they provide youth-friendly centers, uh, facilities rather, that are within uh, the hospital structure. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's not a building on its own because that can be really uh, expensive, but they have set aside a desk for young people whereby you can consult, you can ask questions, and then for the grown ups, just go ask and you'll be directed to where to get these services. Yes, mm. and that's very informative because as you said, it's free of charge. And this is information that people probably do not have. And your reproductive health, your sexual health is very important. So you can go to any public hospital, ask your questions. You know, sometimes people fear the stigma of, will they judge me or will they think this and this of me? take care of your health because it's only you who will have to deal with the consequences if you do not so it's free of charge get the tests get the contraceptives so that in case you're sexually active you do not stand the risk of anything and uh, when we get into stis because this is in alignment with stis so most people do not even have the as partners the young couples most people do not take the step of going to get a test together or when they do the test they'll probably do a hiv test and ignore everything else mm. so what's the value of also couples before becoming sexually active what's the value of them doing a full spectrum test of stis yeah i'll talk both for people who are in commitments full-time commitments and also the swingers so for, for lack of a better word, eh? the swingers, mm -hmm. that anybody you come up close and you're like, <laughs> you're you just know. there. Yeah, remember, it's always good to know the status. And status doesn't mean that uh, whether someone is single or not, or the HIV positive or that. Because there are some STIs that as much as you get treated, they remain in your system. Mm. Okay. An example is the herpes. You can be treated, or hepatitis B, you can be treated yes the disease can be suppressed and it cannot be contracted with the other person but it will always test positive so imagine your relationship with someone and then at some point you go to test and you find that this person tests uh, hepatitis b positive then what happens that bring issues in that relationship so it's always good to take a test not only hiv test but also the sti test so that you can know the status of the other person and if they have a condition if it's something that you can live with is if it's something that can be treated it be treated early and then if it's not something that can, cannot be treated then you can find other ways to solve that if you still want to continue that relationship because you find that there are people who are hiv positive but they are they have been in a relationship with people who are negative so as long as you go to the hospital the doctor can advise you they can treat you they can give you the proper medication that you require in order for you to survive in that relationship but if you're not confident with that person then you always have an option to walk away 
Again, it's a personal choice, but always make sure whether it's you swinging or not, then make sure you get tested. But for the swingers, condom is the best. It's the only method that can uh, give you double protection. That is from the STIs and uh, also uh, pregnancy. Okay, yes. and male condoms, they are most preferred because they are readily available and then they are cheap. And also, it's easy, unlike the female condom, whereby once you use that condom, you need to take in like 30 minutes before so that it can settle in in your body. And then for every round, you need to change. It takes a lot of time. Yeah. So make sure at least, and for women, I know it's weird when you go and then you want to have sex with someone and they remove a condom. But always make sure your safety comes first. Yeah. Always work with, with a condom. You never know. Things yeah, happen that you're not planned, so make sure you always uh, work with a condom, and uh, that's the only way you can find yourself you're safe from pregnancy but also STIs. Yes, and I feel like it's very important for couples to take the test. That's also a test of your relationship, I believe. If you're comfortable enough, or if you're confident in walking in with someone and saying, Let's do this, this test because we want to get serious, we want to get to the next level. It's very important because otherwise, if you're not willing to do that, then use condoms because your safety, your health, as she has said, is the priority over pleasure that it just lasts for a few minutes or a few hours. So let's get into the, the health perspective of this conversation because I'm aware on the 10th of December, it was the Human Rights Day that was commemorated, mm. the 75th, I believe. Mm. Yes. And that was very important because they really rallied behind the sexual and reproductive uh, rights. And uh, in Kenya or in Africa, we still have issues of FGM, we have issues of early marriage. As you said, we have issues of parents sexual trafficking their children and so forth. So how can we do better to ensure that the rights of our young ladies in communities, especially where it's minor communities, let's say Northeastern or Kajiado, in communities where it's very rural and they have no information or it's not modernized, how can we ensure that we protect the rights of women in these communities? Education, education, education. Education is the way. The government should really try and incorporate comprehensive sex education in the curriculum so that kids are taught as early uh, as the age of, you know, eight. Okay, and uh, they can even make it simpler so that such that even young kids receive this information. Also, the government and NGOs, they are really trying also because you find that GBV, it's on the hotspot. It's number one priority in Kenya right now when you talk of SRHR, which the government has also received funding and it's working on it. But if people had this information, then they could have maybe changed their way of life. Or an example, if it's a cultural factor, then maybe they can have, they, they, they could have changed. So NGOs, government, CBOs, they're really trying, but also as a community, as a parent at home, we also need to play our part. Okay, always teach your kid, doesn't matter whether it's a boy or a girl, teach them pass this information as early as, you know, as early as you can, okay? Because you find that these challenges, most of them, they come from home, they come from a lack of information, but as a parent, you know, stop shutting down your kids. Usually the kids of this generation, because of technology, they're exposed to, to so much information, and they have all these questions that they want to ask, but as a parent, you don't want to talk to them, and therefore the kids end up uh, trying out those things out there because they didn't get the information they require from home. So as much as we point fingers to the government, the NGOs and CBOs, as, a, uh, as parents you also need to play our role. Community leaders and the community large also work together jointly so that we can eradicate this challenge. Uh, again, NGOs and CBOs, they are training champions of SRHR so that they can also educate other community people within their area uh, to change the, their way of life because some of these practices, they are cultural. But yes. parents, 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 let's play our role. And it trickles down to the parents and the community leaders. Yes. Because as you said, in the situation in the Kuala County, the parents are the ones who are sexually trafficking their children. And for 100 bob, at the end of the day, nonetheless, which is, it will barely buy you a packet of unga. So how can we also educate the parents and the elders in the community to understand the value of educating the girl child so that they empower the, the women and they help them to even bring more? Because I'm sure once you've educated your child, and she's working and she brings you 10, 20,000, even 5,000, it's much more than what she will get as a teenager bringing 
uh, 25 shillings from one person and it's sleeping with someone, it's invading their sexual and their reproductive system. So how can we educate the parents? And it, Because I think it's also poverty that drives them to that. How can we teach the parents and the elders of these communities to do better, to empower the children, because the benefit is far much better than what they're seeing presently? So there are a lot of factors that contribute, but the major, even according to KDHIS that was published 2022, that's the demographic data uh, in Kenya that's uh, published every year, is that uh, the major causes, the root cause of these issues is education and poverty. So those are the major issues that causes these things to happen, that even parents are willing to sacrifice the kids in order to make just a small amount of money. So this, uh, there's something called uh, right holders, which are the young girls and boys that we engage in our programs. And then they are key influencers of these right holders. Now we're talking about parents, religious leaders, community leaders, and government but mostly religious leaders, communities, and parents, they are closer to these children, even uh, more than the government. Okay? So as much as we are passing information to the kids, we should also sit down with the parents. Let them tell us what they know, okay? then educate them. We should also have group discussions whereby we evaluate what the parents know, what the kids know, and let them interact freely. We give them a f uh, safe space whereby they can interact freely without being really judged uh, of what they know. And then that way, themselves, they can be able even to come, with so, uh, to come up with solutions of the issues that they are facing, not only at their homes, but also within their within community. The community yes. yes. Well, that's very important because the children do not even understand that they have the rights. They have the power to stand and say, no, I'm not going to do this. I have to go to the government and report it to my chief. So it's the lack of information within the communities that makes the parents still be able to do this. Because as you said, sometimes even the parents do not communicate with each other. The father is not aware the child is being sold into doing this. And how can we provide help? for these societies because there's there are rural communities that truly are disconnected from the, the 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 towns and every other perspective of technology and development so how can we help these people who are completely cut off they have no access to information education and all these different perspectives that we're talking about how can we help them to be able to understand the impact of what they're doing in time because if they're truly cut off, they do not really know the impact. They're like, oh, see, it's just that she's already grown up. And that's probably a 14-year-old who's sleeping with... That's prostitution. And the impact on her mental health, on her psychological, even the perspective of men and women. How can we provide the aid to, to these people to help them understand and see what is the truth? Okay, taking the initiative... We educate people from that community because they understand the problems they are, they are facing within that community better than we are. An example, yeah. somebody comes from Karen, another comes from Kibra or Lungalunga, Mkurukayaba. And then somebody from Karen goes to explain a concept to someone from Lungalunga. Will that person That's really relate? It'll be yeah. like, you're rich, so what are you telling? You don't know where I'm coming from. Yeah. But if you can inform this person from Lunga Lunga that you know what, uh, this happens and you can help people in your community when I pass this information to you and then relay this information according to the language th the, the people within your community can understand. That can be a better way to pass information rather than people from the outside. From the outside, understand. yeah. So we recruit people from those specific communities yeah. who are able to relate from the issues. Even some who has experienced those issues, but they have come out of it successfully on the other end. So they can even, uh, they, they pass the information, even using their real life examples. That way the people will understand and they'll perceive that information better than getting outsiders from mm. to read the same information. That's true. And I think I've seen that. There was uh, a lady I went to school with and she was advocating against FGM. So she managed to get away from her community. She was raised by a foreign aid and eventually she went back to the community to help people understand. So I think that's better than you as an outsider coming into the community because you do not truly understand what they deal with day to day. Now let's come back to, to maybe the, the modern society with the 
towns and the cities mm -hmm. because now we have technology now we have all this information and sometimes it's even the songs where girls and women are dancing half naked and they're talking about being sexually active men are doing the same thing so how can we help the the young ladies understand that you have to have your morals and being sexually active with every single person is not the ideal way to live uh, we did a campaign during the 16 days of activism, which involved about talking about tech for good. So we have access to all this information that's too much, some information that uh, younger people d uh, don't need to access, but since it's there in the open, then what happens? So we should control whatever our children uh, have to in the internet, okay? And we should use technology for good. So yes, give a child access again if they don't understand the technology and we, in this era of ai then they'll be left behind and they'll not be able to catch up and everything is shifting yeah okay so yes let the children access technology but always be there to control and to guide them so that they can use this technology for good again for people who are uh, receiving harassment and all this there are platforms that you can report online you don't have to go physically because people fear that when you show yourself yeah, you show up or you go to report a case maybe you don't have experience or somebody else a friend or somebody close has experience but when you go to report there's a stigma but you can, only, you can leverage on that to report online and then that person or you can receive help so we should always advocate uh, to use technology for good and uh, if the children are younger limit to the access in which they have to the internet yes mm -hmm. and that's very important because you know sometimes it's il it's even influenced we we have the conversation of lgbtq in this day and age where so many people sometimes they're influenced by social media they'll probably see an artist they love who's dressing up it might be a guy he's dressing up feminine and they're like okay this is the trend sometimes people just want to identify with the group because of the trend that they perceive is going on online without truly understanding that there are people who are dealing with this from a perspective of their genetics it's who they were born as so how can we also make that clear because these days we have so many youth because of peer pressure they're part of the gay community and then you find a few years later they've come back so how can we also make this clear to the, the children as much as we're advocating for the rights of LGBTQ plus and whatnot? How can we make it clear that it's not a choice? This is something that you're possibly born with and help make children understand what it means to have their sexual identities. Understanding their sexuality. And uh, uh, in terms of LGBTQ, yeah, you're supposed to understand that you're not, you're not supposed to stigmatize them because it's a human right. They are human beings. And as, you, as a human being, you have a right to live the way you are, the way you want because of your body. And then you own your own sexuality. So when you make the child understand that, they should own their own sexuality. They should get to understand who they are, not only physically but also sexually, then from there they'll be able to know which path to follow. Again, they should, they should also understand that some of these people who are in the LGBTQ community, it's not uh, because of choice. Yes, there are so those who have chosen, like, yes, I want to be a lesbian or gay. But there are others who, because of the circumstances that they faced when they were young, they are the way they are right now. So when you make them understand, then they'll be able to choose in which uh, how they want to be their sexual identity they'll be able to choose their sexual orientation how they are sexually and also physically but will be able to determine how your kids turn out to be again parents remember this is a discussion you should always engage with your children the, the more they grow continue advancing uh, the information slowly by slowly and you'll be surprised how yes. kids can understand and perceive information they do understand we think that they don't but they but do. children are very perceptive yes. and they're very smart because you know they're getting information from other children mm -hmm. maybe when they're playing around and whatnot so they're very smart and they will ask questions they're inquisitive as well so you have to have the right information to help them get the knowledge and have the information as they progress with their life because out here they will find it on the internet it's better for you to educate them from the house from your home to help them to make the right decisions I also want to, you see with the sexuality, these days I feel like we are finding sexuality by ourselves. Even yeah. as women, as much as been, there's been the, the women empowerment movement and the girl child being uh, focused mm. on, 
sometimes there's no focus on the sexuality of what it means to be a woman, what it means to be a man. And these days I find it very sad because so many men have lost the sense of sexuality yes. because there's no one to guide them. And they're probably learning from wrong uh, role models and whatnot because they're probably all lost. So how can we help both genders to really understand their sexuality, what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman, the right understanding of sexuality? How can we do that? Yes, and you are right, such that we are finding out who, who we are or what you want to be, uh, mostly via social media, even sex itself. You find that you're not told sex is uh, this is what happens people think that sex is just the action itself but it's more than it's mental it starts from uh, your, your mental mind. your mind and then as you build now you come to the action and for you to sustain that sex until both of you are satisfied you have to be emotionally connected and mentally there at that moment but you find that most people disconnect the moment you start the act itself so we should people should be taught as Ali and uh, yes we in the 21st century technology is here we're talking about AI but uh, you see the trainings that people used to receive when w uh, back in the olden days even us we have not experienced I'm pretty yes. sure we didn't experience uh, we didn't find that happening uh, but you'll be surprised the things the information you can find in these communities who have still maintained their culture mm -hmm. that girls were taught how to be a woman what it entails to be a woman boys were taught and through that they got to understand that relationship is just beyond the sexual or the intimate part it's more than that it's bigger than that so they were taught to understand and they're able even to play now they are able to play the role as a woman this is my role this is what I'm supposed to do as a man this is my role and with the empowerment hey, women nowadays they've become that you're not stolen <laughs> you know what yeah I'm a woman this is me and uh, yeah but as much as uh, women are empowered we, you also need, when you go home be empowered out there do what you can of course at home also you need to have a say but not to what limit yes okay yes. so make sure you play your role as a woman same case to a man you know that a man is the head of the family but uh it's 50 50. we are equal you took me as your wife and so i'm 50. so i'm supposed to contribute 50 in this uh, relationship and also you 50 you so you should always me. your conversations should always be open you discuss everything and then as a man play your role as a woman play your role yeah, yeah. and i think what you've said is true you know women squeezy they have like kiburi yeah. and unfortunately most women are operating from their masculine energy because mm -hmm. they want to they've been too empowered I'm sorry to say this, but sometimes yeah. we find that women are too <laughs> empowered, but we've left behind the boy, the boy child. child. So there needs to be understanding on both parts because we all have a role to play. It's gender equity so that all of us can be at the same level to understand each other. So mm. I think this has been a very informative conversation. Perhaps you can give us your parting shot and tell us where we can find you on social media as well as the organization because I'm sure there are so many people who are interested in finding out more about this conversation. Yeah, thank you. So as I have said, uh, these conversations, they need to be talked out uh, in families, set up, even before we go to the, ch to ch to the schools and uh, uh, blaming the government, the conversation needs to start at home. And then as we progress, comprehensive sex education is important, it's key. People need to understand their sexuality and you can start passing information uh, to a young kid and let them advance the conversation as they grow. Okay? And uh, what I'll say is one voice can make a difference even when the world is silent so if you have the power if you have the correct information always make sure you hear your voice and as at girls health ed we always make sure you pass the correct and right information to this class so that they can make decisions from an informed point okay and you can find me on my social medias at valeria bridget uh, at valeria underscore bridget on twitter facebook uh, instagram is pretty cheery and then at Girls Health Ed on all social media platform and Kenya social media platforms at Girls Health Ed KE on all social media platforms. Thank, thank you, you so much for that. Yeah, thank and you for And as you've me. said, I'm going to echo that. This is a conversation that needs to be had because each and every one of us experience this. It's the same as spirituality. It's the same as just your physical health. 
sexual and reproductive health and rights is something that we all need to be aware of. I hope you've taken away something from this conversation. I'm really sorry that today I can't sample your comments. Time is really not on our side. But I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. I hope you're enjoying your holidays. If you have children staying with you, I hope our Zakukula Akilisana. May you enjoy Christmas. It's going to be next week. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will see each other after that. If you're traveling, have safe travels and uh, enjoy this entire season. I hope it's full of blessings and love and a lot of mm -hmm. bond and family time that is it today from y254 tv this has been the power talk show and my name is cheryl blessing